Hey everybody and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. So in today's video we're going to be removing people from our movie clips like we've done before. So this clip has more things that we need to remove and it takes a little bit more work. But I'm going to show you how you can optimize your workflow once we've done it once we can just copy and repeat. Then if you have any projects like this in the future you can just uh, import one node and then the job's pretty much done for you. So let's go ahead and show you the result. So as you can see we're in uh, Blender 2.8 but this would work in Blender 2.79 and as I mentioned we did a video on this already which you can check out up here, I'll throw a link. But as I said that last one it was we only removed one thing whereas this we have quite a few things to remove so, so again you can use Blender 2.79 or you can use Blender 2.8 so there may be a few little differences uh, between the two versions. So if you do have any trouble just post a comment below or you can go to our Facebook group again the links will be in the description. Let's go ahead and get started. So I want to use the VFX workstation, but you can use uh, the general one if you want, it's up to you. So this is the VFX workstation and we have a few little tabs we can change between. If this is the first time you've seen Blender 2.8, make sure you go ahead and check out a video we've done previously, which is just my thoughts and opinions. But essentially this is the new workstation and we can just switch between the tabs to uh, do the different functions. But right now we have a couple of windows that we don't need. We have these two windows. So what I'm going to do is just close these down. So I'm going to get to the edge and just right click. Then I'm going to press join. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Join area. And I just want to join this one. So we just have this window. Now what we can do is go ahead and open up our movie clip. So this is the movie clip that I'm using and I'll throw a link in the description where you can download this too. So let's go ahead and set the scene frames. You can go up here and click this button or you can go down here and just, just type in how many frames you want to use. Now we can go ahead and prefetch. Now what this does is fills this purple bar up all the way. If it doesn't fill up all the way you will need to go to edit, uh, preferences, then I think system and just increase the memory cache limit or the sequencer cache limit I think it's called. And then when you prefetch it it'll just fill up all the way and you can scrub through your clip so so we can see that the video it's moving the camera is moving that's not going to be a big issue for this uh, what we do want to focus on is getting rid of these people here this guy and a few in the background so we just want to turn this into a clip where there's no people and we'll be able to use it in the future if we want to um, without any people so <laughs> let's go ahead and do that so as I mentioned, we did this in a previous tutorial where we got rid of one guy who was stood in front of some water. It's pretty much the exact same steps. So let's go ahead and uh, set some tracking markers. For this, we can choose, I think location will be fine, but I'm just going to choose location rotation. Then I want to change the match to previous frame. Then I want to check normalize. We go ahead and add our first tracking marker. Before we do that, I just want to go over here to where it says track. And then if we go over here, I'm going to hold control and then left click. We can see a preview of where Blender's going to track. Now, we can see there's some water in the background here. And this will move constantly. So what I want to do is just move this marker down a bit. Just until we don't see any of this white. And we can also scale it down. So this should be a good area for Blender to track. So one of the things I mentioned in, in one of the previous tutorials where we did tracking is the fact that you can't see the search size which is something I use all the time but then somebody left a comment on the video and let me know where it was so thank you to you it's greatly appreciated if we want to see the search size we can go over here to clip display or we can use the shortcut which is alt s but if we go over here to clip display we have a whole bunch of options we can choose um, if we check search size there we go I just want to scale this down quite a bit so this is the first one that I need I need another one over here and then I'm going to need one down here, so let's try and find a good spot. So this should be okay. Let's try this. And again, if you need to add any more tracking markers, go ahead and do that. So press A, and we're going to select all of these. Then you can go down here to these tracking buttons here, or you can use the original track menu here. It's up to you. So I'm just going to track these forward and make sure none of these slip. Uh, play through each of these and make sure they don't jump around or move that's not too bad there's a bit of film grain that moves but essentially it stays in the same spot now here you can see the man's head actually gets in the way so let's go ahead and retract this otherwise this will cause us some trouble so 
jump back to the first frame. What I need to do is clear this tracking data, this tracking information. So again, I could either press this button here or this one here. Just move this over to maybe this spot here. Then track it forward. And that looks good. So we've got these three tracking markers. We can go ahead and move on to the masking. So like in previous versions, you can press tab and go into the masking mode. Or you can change the workstation to the other window. Again, we can get rid of these two here. Right click, join area. Same thing for this. Oops. Try that again. Right click, join area. Now we have this. Now let's go ahead and click this movie clip icon and choose our movie clip. So we still have our markers here. Like, Let's go ahead and create a new mask. Go up here to new. Let's call this, uh, what can we call it? We're essentially just going to add this section over his face like a band-aid or a patch. So maybe we call it patch. So now what I'm going to do is create a mask here in this clean area. Then in the compositing, we're just going to move this area over a copy of the area as a patch and just patch over his face. Then we're going to do the same thing for the other areas that we want to get rid of. Um, so it's pretty simple. Um, we first need to create these masks. So let's go ahead and do that. So for this one, I want to get as much clean area as I can. So I'm going to, and I want to make sure it's above his head. So start here, control left click. Uh, select about here, control left click. And make sure you don't go too close to the man in case he moves a little bit over. We can check as we scrub through later on, but I'm just going to do something like this. Then I'm going to press Alt C to close it. Now the last thing we need to do is parent this to a tracking marker. I'm going to parent it to this tracking marker at the back. So first right click this tracking marker, then press A just so we have this mask selected. Then hold Control and press P. Now we've parented this mask to this tracking marker. So if we play through this uh, movie clip, I'm just make this a little bit bigger. So if we play through this now, we see that the mask stays in position and that's what we need. So I'm just gonna jump back to the first frame. I'm gonna do the same thing now for the waterfall, just create a mask here. And then the same thing for this water down here. So again, let's go ahead and create a new mask. This one's gonna be called waterfall. And then control left click. Now what I'm going to do is instead of staying on this side of this rock, I'm actually going to grab a little bit of it and use it. So let's control left click here. Again, you don't want to go too close because this guy's arm might appear. So we'll check. So we'll check that a little bit later on. But I just want to do something like this. Press Alt C to close the mask. So right click, select this marker. Press A, select all of them. Control P, there we go. So you wanna play through and make sure this guy's arm doesn't um, in, doesn't go beyond this mask. If it does, you'll just need to reposition the mask. And also you need to be aware that we're adding some blur to it as well. So once we add some blur, the arm might bleed in. So we need to go back a little bit further depending on how much blur we add. And again, this is all stuff we can change later on. So now I'm gonna create the last one in the same way, and then I'll come back to you guys. So now we have our masks. Let's select the compositing workspace. Now if we go to use nodes, backdrop's already enabled, which is good. I'm just gonna drag this down a little bit. Now we have our render layers and our composite node just like before. So let's get rid of this render layers. You can either press X to delete, or if you've got the node wrangler add on, you can just hold shift and then press S and then you can switch the type. So I'm just going to switch this node from a render layer to a movie clip. Go to input movie clip. Now we can select this icon and choose the movie clip that we've been working with. Now we don't see anything. So let's go ahead and add a viewer node. In the new version of Blender, if you hold Control, Shift, and left click, you can add a viewer node, which is the same if you've got the Node Wrangler add-on. So that's just been added to 2.8 as standard, which I think was pretty nice. So also one of the new features of Blender, if you select the viewer node, you can actually move the background around or scale it up and down. Anyway, so let's go ahead and move on. Um, 
again this effect is very simple so I'm just going to set up the nodes once and then what I'm going to do is create a super node or a mega node and then just duplicate that one node um, across all the different times that I need to use it so it'll make sense in a minute um, if you've not created super nodes before then I'm just going to show you how to do that as well but I've done that a few times on this channel so probably you guys already know how to do that by now anyway so let's go ahead and uh, shift A go to color mix I'm going to drop this on the bottom string which is a composite node so now when I hold control shift and left click I can just connect it to the viewer node and I do that a lot just to save a little bit of time rather than just manually plugging these in so the next thing I want to do is add a mask shift A input mask and if we select the mask icon change this to patch plug this into the factor now we have this you'll notice that for this example at least that the mask is out of position and a lot of people ask me why is the mask out of position when they create their masks and most times it's one of two things you need to go here to the output settings and we first need to make sure that this percentage slider is at 100 percent and then we also need to make sure that the video resolution is the same as the movie clip that we're using now normally this is the resolution I use for every video clip but for this one um, it's actually a little bit less so let's go ahead and select the presets and we actually want to choose HDTV 720p now as soon as we do that we can see that the settings have been changed but nothing's been updated yet so let's select let's unplug this mask and then just plug it right back in now it's updated and it's got the correct scale it's in the right position so now we can go ahead and move on so I just want to take this image feed from the movie clip I just plug this in the second image slot here and nothing's changed it's exactly the same so let's go ahead and move things around shift a go to distort and then transform then I'm going to drop this on the bottom string so for this effect, anytime you want to move I think, something around, it'll be the bottom string. The middle one here, this top string, is the background, the overall background. This one will become essentially a patch or a band-aid if you want, <laughs> however you want to think of it. So let me just show you what I mean. If we move this on the Y out of position, you'll see it just moved this, it moves this section up. The trouble is the mask stays in the same position so what we'd need to do so we just need to copy this uh, transform node so select the transform node shift T and then just drop it in here so now every time we move this on the Y here we just need to update it here as well so what we could do is add a node just to control both of them at the same time makes our job a lot easier so I just by the way I just reset these values by hovering over it and then pressing backspace Let's go ahead and add a node just to control both of these at the same time. Shift A, go to input, value. So, so it's a very simple node, it's just a value node. You add a type of value, plug it into something and it will become that value. So it's pretty useful. Let's go ahead and reset this to zero. And then what I'm gonna do is plug this into the X and also the X just for both of these nodes. Now I'm gonna press Shift D and then plug this into the Y of both of these nodes and then one more time shift D and this is going to be for the scale now the scale we can see is a default value of 1 so this needs to be a default value of 1 uh, if we didn't if we just plug these in it um, it would become a value of 0 so you wouldn't see anything so now this is a value of 1 let's plug this in and we have this little setup here so if we select these three nodes by holding shift and left clicking them press G bring these out of the way just so we can see what we're doing now when we move these values we're just going to put this patch over his head so let's go ahead and do that looks pretty good we can also scale this up um, you don't want to scale up too much because um, it will look a little bit odd and then you just want to make sure everything lines up so let's do that looks okay now one more thing that we need to do is we can see we have these sharp harsh lines so we need to add a blur node so let's go ahead and put these back and then we need to add a blur node between the mask and the transform and for this we can give this a decent amount say maybe 20 or 30 maybe a bit more just so you can 
So it's up to you again how much you blur this. I'm not too worried about this here because we're, we're going to add stuff over it. So that's pretty good. So now we can see we have this node set up and we're going to just repeat this process uh, for the other stuff that we want to cover up. So as I mentioned before, I'm just going to create that super node or the mega node or whatever you want to call it. People, Some people have called it an uber node. I'm not sure what the technical term for it is. So we don't need the background movie clip and we also don't need the mask and the blur. So what I'm going to do is press B and box select all of these here. So this mix node, these two transform nodes and also these value nodes here. Let's just copy these, so press Shift D, duplicate them. Now since we still have them selected, I'm going to press Control G, and we can see we've gone into a different menu here. To get out of it, you just need to press Tab. So you can see it's converted these nodes here into this one little node group here. So select this and then tab into edit mode. Now the first thing we need to do is have an output so our mix node here, this image, let's just plug this into this output. And now it's just added this image slot here. If we press N, we can bring up this uh, toolbar here. So what I want to do is change this output name. I'm just going to go to where it says name and change this to output, just so we know what it does. So then we tab out of edit mode. Now we have feed, but we have nothing to plug into. So let's go ahead and fix that. So the first thing we need to do is that on this mix node here, this would be our background image. So I'm going to use this first, plug this in. And again, if you want, you can select this and rename it. But, but I don't mind keeping it as image since we're used to that on most things. Now, the next one I want to take is this one down here. This is the patch or the thing that's going to be added over. So select this image, bring it into here. Then we also need the mask. So if you remember, this is the mask. So let's plug this into the bottom. Now for this, we have three, <laughs> so now we have three things that says image. So let's select this last one and change this to mask. And if you wanted to, you can select the mask and then put it at the top, just so it's a little bit similar to how the mix node is. But what I find is if we have it like this, when I drop this into a node, it'll plug the first thing into the mask, which is not what we want. So what I'll do is I'll just select this mask and I just want this one to be at the bottom. So you can have it any way around you want, it's entirely up to you. So let's select these value nodes here. I'm just going to press G and bring them out of the way. We just want to deconnect these. If we've got the node wrangler add-on enabled, we can do this a quick way. If we hold control and then left click and drag, we can draw this line and just de disconnect these strings. So now what I need to do is, like we did with adding these images, we're just adding these values. Bring this X value over here. Same thing for this one, let's connect it to the same one. Now I'll do the same for the Y, let's add a new slot. Connect this up to the same Y slot. And then do the same for the scale. And if you wanted to do the same thing for the angle, if you're moving things around or rotating it around, you can do the same thing, but I generally don't use the rotation, so I'm not gonna add this. But now we have this, let's, we can delete these here. And we have our node. Let's go ahead and replace it. So I'm going to press, so make sure I don't have anything selected. Then I'm going to press B, select these nodes, delete. Now if you press X, you delete things like this. I'm going to press Control Z. If you press Control X, it deletes the nodes, but it still has the strings connected. And again, that's a node wrangler add-on feature, so pretty useful. So now if we plug this node group in, so as I mentioned, it goes straight to the image. If we had the mask at the top, this one would go to the mask, which, which wouldn't work. So that's why I added the mask to the bottom. Anyway, so now this is plugged into the composite node. Let's connect it to the viewer. So control shift, left click. We have this. So again, just add in your mask and plug this into the mask slot. There we go. So it's over here. Then what we can do, we take the movie clip, plug that into the second image. Now we can move this around very comfortably and easily, like so. Something like this. Now we have this one node. All we need to do is just duplicate it, add the mask node, and just play around with the values. Since I need to do this a few times, it's gonna save me a lot of work. 
and it's also it looks convenient it's all in one node rather than having three separate nodes and moving things around and then when you get tons more nodes added up it just gets overwhelming when it's in a super node group like this then uh, things become a lot easier so also if you save this project folder so control s just save this as we could name this as patch so then when you're trying to do stuff like this in the future then you can go to file append and bring in this node group again into your new projects so it gives you rebuilding this node over and over again so i'm going to select this and just rename it um i'm not sure what we can call it maybe a mixed transform since it mixes it and then moves it or we could probably call it the patch node that'd probably be interesting <laughs> patch node so now we have our patch node save this and let's go ahead and repeat the process so let's see how easy this is if we press shift d just to duplicate this so i'm just going to reset these values to zero so i'm going to hover over it and press backspace for this one i'm just going to enter a value of one so now this is a fresh node let's just drop it down here then press shift d and drop it onto the composite node so the reason why I added it down here, just so when we change these values, we don't have to keep resetting the node. Just saves a little bit of time. Anyway, so let's connect this up to the view node. Control shift, left click, shift A, input, mask. Change the mask to waterfall. Plug this into the mask. Now we can see the area that's being affected. Let's plug the output into the image. So it looks, looks something like this. Then all we need to do is just move this over, keep moving it until we see this edge a bit more. Something like that is good. We can also scale up if we need to, just a couple of times maybe. We also need to bring it down. And again, make sure you don't see that guy behind it. So now we have this, uh, we need to blur it. So let's go ahead and copy this blur, Shift D. Just drop this in. And you'd wanna go around and play around with the value. So maybe 25 something like that it has a bit of hazy effect if i press m to mute it you can see looks pretty good it's pretty quick and easy let's go ahead and do the last one press b move these out of the way move these over here select this drop it in connect up to the view node again you, you guys know how it's done now uh, plug this into the mask plug this into the image Let's change this mask to water bottom. Plug this into the mask. And then what we need to do, we could scale this up a little bit and then move it over. And move it down. Actually, we could scale this up quite a bit. So I want something like this. I, am, I know we can see the head, so I will come back later on, add another mask, and then add another uh, patch node and just connect it up just to cover this area here for the rocks. So the same techniques, just a little bit different. And maybe for the hair here as well. Also for any of the edges that we, um, that we can see. But for this, let's go ahead and add in a blur node again. Shift D. This one can be blurred quite a bit, I think. Maybe not that much, but you get the idea. So kind of get an idea how the effect works. We just need to, again, clean these areas up. Um, also play through, make sure the guy's head, which was moving down here, doesn't get in the way, which we can see it does. So I would need to remove that. But I think you can get the idea just with a few, uh, once we've tidied things up, it looks a lot nicer. Um, but it's an easy way to get rid of people from your movie clips. So again, I'll finish this off before we render this out as a final. So once you're happy with this and you want to render this out, you will need to... Let's go ahead and change a few things. Again, we've already made sure that the resolution is okay. Make sure you set the start and end frame. And if you want to change the frame rate as well, go ahead and do that. So now in output, we want to change the folder. Otherwise, it's going to get saved to our temp folder. So select this icon. So now we know where the output is. Let's go ahead and change the file format. Right now it'll render out as a PNG image sequence, which we don't want. So let's select this, go to FFmpeg video. Then what we need to do is down here under encoding, we can select this presets here and then choose H.264 in MP4 format. 
As soon as we select that, we can see it's changed. So now we can go ahead and render this out, go up here to render. And before I do it, before I actually render it out, I want to change the display mode. This, when it renders out, it'll be rendering in a new window. So instead, I just want to change it to an image editor. Then go to render and render the animation. Or you can use the shortcut, which is Control F12. It's entirely up to you. But once you've rendered this out, you should have a clean movie clip ready to be used in your future projects. So hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, be sure to give this a like. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.